Hello and welcome back to API Days Live Singapore. This track we're, we're starting now is uh, the government track. We heard from Kendrick Lee from GovTech uh, in the keynote. And uh, in this series, we're going to hear from Eric Chang, who is also from GovTech, uh, talking about uh, the Safe Entry API. We're then going to hear from Nick Blythe about the New South Wales Digital Drivers Licence. Uh, Monica Posada from uh, the European Commission uh, to talk about the APIs for Digital Government initiative. And then we're going to bring back uh, Kendrick and Nick and Monica and Monica's colleague uh, Lorenzino for a, a panel discussion. So I'm, I'm very pleased to, uh, to introduce Eric Chang. He's the lead solutions architect for GovTech and uh, um, He's going to discuss the Safe Entry API. Thanks very much, Eric. All right. Thanks, John. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this presentation. My name is Eric, and I'm the lead solution architect from the National Digital Identity Program, or NDI, uh, within GovTech. So in this morning's um, keynote, Kendrick gave an excellent overview on the NDI program, as well as many of our offerings to businesses. Um, and in this session, I'll be sharing with you one of the initiatives called Safe Entry that is built on the NDI stack and uses APIs in Singapore's fight against COVID-19. Now, before I dive into the presentation proper, I thought it would be good to provide a compressed um, event timeline that led to the birth of uh, Safe Entry. And we all know that the whole COVID situation started sometime uh, late last year with the discovery of the virus and its alarming rate of um, infection. In January, the Ministry of Health issued travel advisories and implemented temperature scans in Changi Airport for visitors into Singapore, and subsequently enhanced and extended that to all land and sea checkpoints after confirming the first few cases within the country. And in the next few months, more and more control measures were put in place in response to the escalation of our DOSCON level from um, yellow to orange, and the government distributed surgical masks to the population, people started working from home, and school children switched um, to home-based learning, and bringing us effectively into what we now call as the circuit breaker. And this is a time when staffs in the supermarket starts running out um, from daily necessities like groceries and toilet papers uh, to more surprising and exotic items um, like birth control products, duct tapes, and canes. Now, during this period, the NDI team started on a project um, named Travel and Health Declaration System to help businesses keep track of visitors to their premises and in unfortunate circumstances, help in contact tracing. As the situation evolves, the product itself went through numerous iterations and refinements to become the safe entry as we know it today. And as Certificate Breaker ends on 1st June and Singapore goes into phase one of resuming activities, Safe Entry was mandated to be used as the national check-in system that locks visits by individuals to hotspots and venues to help in contact tracing. Now, fast forwarding to today, Singapore is currently in phase two of opening up and many businesses have resumed operations under certain restrictions. Safe Entry has since onboarded about 100K businesses and deployed in more than 200 thousand venues on the ground. Now, if you're in Singapore and has been going around, it will really be hard for you not to have used safe entry before. So with these numbers and a rough population gauge of about 4 million, um, I would like to pause here for about 10 seconds and ask that you indulge me um, in a little estimation game. Can you guess the total number of unique users using safe entry on a daily basis? Or the total number of transactions that we get per day what do you think is the peak concurrency recorded and the average response time from safe entry? You can note down your estimations and I will review the actual numbers in 10 seconds, starting from now. All right, thanks for your participation. As promised, here are the actual numbers captured by our metrics. Now we have recorded slightly more than 200 million unique users 
with close to 9 million transactions on a daily basis. Our peak concurrency was about 160 per second, recorded during morning and evening peak hours, plus lunch time. Average server response time was about 100 milliseconds, with roughly additional 50 milliseconds during peak timings. Personally, I'm actually very happy with not just the performance figures, but also about our technology choices that ensured this kind of performance from day one. And this brings me to the system architecture of SafeEntry. Now, when we first started, we needed a platform that allows for quick iterations and fast prototyping as the situation was ever changing. Hence, with the government's cloud first policy in mind, cloud was a natural choice. And combining architectural best practices with AWS well architected framework, this is the result of um, the system architecture that we have today. It is a three tier uh, architecture with the back tier made out of components like S3 and CloudFront to serve out the simple page uh, application web form built on AngularJS. And as highlighted in the diagram, supporting APIs are served out via the API gateway with applications here using AWS serverless technology Lambda to house application logics written in Node.js. All transactions to safe entry are locked in RDS within the database layer. We also use the AWS suite of CI CD services to realize DevOps and automated the entire development to release process with minimal human intervention. Now, from this technology stack, you can see that we have chosen to use native cloud services as far as possible, and there are good reasons for that. Firstly, Serving content through S3 and CloudFront, combining that with API Gateway plus serverless Lambda, we were actually able to focus all our energy into developing functionalities rather than worrying about setting up uh, VMs or deploying Kubernetes clusters and, and you know, configuring auto-scaling threshold, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, with very generous service limits of native services, scalability and availability is already ensured without us having to run performance tests against, say, uh, you know, the Kubernetes clusters, and for us to ensure that the servers are actually auto-scaled to handle the additional loads. And as you can see from the presentation so far, right, Safe Entry started off uh, sort of like a monolithic application designed for a specific purpose. I will now bring us through the, the events and learnings that led to the evolution of safe entry from that into an ecosystem that offers integration APIs to other systems. As mentioned earlier, we started off with the travel and health declaration system that requires businesses to load the site on tablets or laptops for visitors to provide their information and declaration. This approach was actually met with logistics issues as well as negative feedbacks about the hygiene of you know, visitors sharing the common device. These feedbacks and operation issues were taken seriously, and in the next rollout, the system was enhanced so that onboarded businesses are only required to print and deploy unique QRs within their premises. Visitors can then scan the QRs and provide information on their own personal devices. This lightweight approach was greatly welcomed by businesses, and the system was subsequently rebranded as Safe Entry and mandated it to be used nationwide. As more and more people started to use Safe Entry, feedback from the ground also increases. Some of the notable ones include um, third party QR scanners having very annoying and distracting advertisements um, during the scanning. Um, as well as usability issues, such as um, the inability to perform multiple check-ins at one go, et cetera, et cetera. So in May, the first set of Safe Entry APIs was introduced to allow SingPass mobile users to be able to scan QR codes built, uh, using the built-in scanner and allow uh, a mass check-in for up to five people. And as of la last month, July, we have also integrated with Trace Together which is another COVID-19 initiative by uh, GovTech to provide yet another avenue for users to perform check-in and check-outs uh, and making Safe Entry the center repository for contact tracing data. 
Now, on the private sector front, we have also received feedback about using safe entry on top of um, businesses' uh, existing visitor management systems. Visitors sign in um, became a two prong process, right? Once at the security counter with the BMS, followed by scanning of the safe entry QR um, for checking in and checking out. Now, this is uh, pretty cumbersome and could result in visitor not completing the second part, which in turn impede con contact tracing efforts. So to address this gap, we will be launching Safe Entry APIs for businesses to integrate with their VMS, allowing visitor registration and Safe Entry check-in to be done in one single step. So please keep a lookout for this offering in the next few days via our developer and partner portal. Okay, this is the, the, the URL of uh, our developer and partner portal as shared um, during this morning's uh, keynote. All right, you can also scan the QR code um, to, to get to the same uh, URL. Now, this is a self-service portal where we publish all NDI's um, product offerings and onboarding details for both uh, developers and business users. You can expect to find resources such as product and technical documentations, as well as tutorials and sample codes to demonstrate how the integration can be done. One of the most important piece of documentation that you can find on the portal is definitely the interface specifications, all right? And it provides technical documentation of the integration uh, APIs that we have published. And here uh, is a sneak preview of the safe entry uh, API specification for businesses that will be published. Uh, and I'll walk us through some of the key parts in the specs. First and foremost, the URLs to the API uh, in the various environments is located on the top right corner in the API section. The different environments, namely sandbox, test, and production, are provided for developers to progressively move through development phases from fast prototyping a business idea to user testing, and finally to go live. Moving on, um, the next is the request body schema that lists the expected inputs to the API, complete with descriptions and examples. Also stated here is the content type of the request body, which is the application Jose. Um, it suggests that the payload will need to be signed or encrypted. And I'll cover this later during uh, the API security part. Moving on. At the bottom of the API section contains um, successful and possible error responses from the API that the developers uh, will need to handle. HTTP status code combined with descriptive error messages in the response uh, will allow developers to gracefully fail their applications and provide corrective steps to the user. Now I'll quickly move on to the um, security aspect of our APIs which leverages on a PKI digital signature to determine the identity of the caller. And during the onboarding process, businesses are required to submit a recognized uh, uh, certificate authority certificate that binds a private and public key pair owned by the business. And using the private key to sign on a formulated base string that represents the entire HTTP request, this signature is then attached to the authorization HTTP header to be verified by our API. Now, the formulation of the base string is already explained in our tutorials um, uh, in, in developer and partner portal, so uh, I will not explain further here. But I wanted to point out that um, for this particular API, the request body should also be added as part of the base string to ensure non-repudiation. And given that the request body contains sensitive information such as personal identifiers, um, like the SAP uh, that we've seen previously, um, uh, plus also the mobile numbers, okay, we, are, we require the body to be sent in a JWE compact serialization format, encrypted with our public key using standard algorithms as mentioned here. Finally, 
here is a sample of the HTTP, of the complete HTTP request actually to the safe entry uh, API, which most developers here would appreciate more than just me talking through uh, the, the specifications, all right? So I would urge you to visit our developer and partner portal, okay, to actually read up on our APIs and the security mechanism. The information shared on the portal is much more than what I can cover during this presentation. All right? Okay, and with this, I thank you for joining the session, and I hope I've excited you enough on how we have used API uh, in Singapore's fight against COVID-19. Um, any questions? If not, um, I will request uh, Hannah. Eric, thanks very much for, for that. Um, we, we have time for some questions of, of Eric. I guess yep. one, one thing I'd like to understand is um, when you, what, what sort of partners are you expecting to, uh, to use the, um, the Safe Entry API? And what sort of interest have you had from, from partners so far? Well, uh, most of the interest generates, um, like I explained previously, is about is, is businesses that actually have existing uh, DMS, visitor management systems. Um, and they have feedback to us that, you know, um, for uh, a visitor to their premise, um, it, the, the whole process of trying to, to, to get into a place involves going to a security counter, registering with their existing DMS, uh -huh. and then having to scan a QR code again to provide the safe entry mm -hmm. uh, a record with uh, with with mm -hmm. us all right so um, uh, it becomes a bit cumbersome for for them all right and then uh, it will be simpler if let's say uh, uh, you know we offer actually integration apis for the visitor management system to integrate with so that it can complete the entire registration process mm -hmm. in one step uh, without the visitor mm -hmm. doing additional all right so in regard to the visitor management systems, are mm -hmm. these, um, is there a set of uh, a dozen or so standard vendors or are they very much tailored for particular solutions? Mm, well, the API is uh, as is in terms of, um, you just uh, basically get a, a certificate, mm -hmm. produce the digital signature uh, yeah. that we recognize on board with us. Um, so the solution can actually be, uh, you know, provided by uh, uh, um, solution providers or the, uh, the, the businesses themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty flexible in, in, in that sense. So it depends yeah. on, yeah, the, the so, interest level of the industry. So you've, you've received inquiries from uh, the facilities management mm -hmm. teams of, of large buildings and businesses yep. asking about that. Um, yep. Have they expressed uh, are they users of? Uh, have you also reached out to the different vendors of the of the visitor management solutions? Well, um, I definitely think that that is underway. Um, uh -huh. So far, we have uh, gotten contacts from uh, uh, major businesses, uh, like you uh -huh. said, you know, the building management people, um, mm -hmm. to integrate with with our APIs um, right. to to shorten that process of uh, visitors uh, coming in. Yeah. So you have a. Um, a certification process for mm -hmm. for people wanting to use your your APIs. Yep. Um, then now you already have um, for for your other APIs, you already have um, sample code and documentation, um, yep. and and this is and this is in train for the safe entry API. Is it? Mm -hmm. So it will be similar. The, uh -huh. the slight difference here is that for most of our APIs that we have exposed uh, so far uh, involves an OAuth2 process, 
mm-hmm. uh, where the, the actual users log in with Singpass um, and then agrees to sharing of this information before right. the actual resource call. Mm-hmm. For safe entry, um, the pivot is slightly different. We want to, to capture uh, information of people visiting hotspots um, and be able to, to aid in our contact tracing. So, you know, there's, there's not much point in asking people to log on to, I, to an identity platform, especially for those that um, visitors to Singapore that, that you know, that doesn't have like a, a SingPass uh, mm-hmm. kind of uh, uh, account. Right. So, so for this, um, we would rely on um, the partners um, flow and sending us a request that, you know, I'm trying to check in this person with this particular identifier and this is his contact number. Um, and then we will use that information for, for contact tracing. Mm-hmm. So it's more on uh, validating the, the actual client that's calling us rather than right. the, the actual user of the system itself. Right. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, to the, the audience, you can ask any questions in the, in the chat on, on the left-hand side. Uh, sorry, on the right-hand side. Um, we, we have uh, time for just a couple of questions of, of Eric before we, we uh, bring on the next speaker. Okay, so we have a, a question. Um, okay, so this is an interesting question. So a non-business partner. Mm-hmm. So someone who wants to build an app. Mm-hmm. I, I guess is I, I guess is related to not somebody who owns a building, but somebody who wants to provide an app uh, for people to use universally across across different systems. I, I would expect there'd be a certification process for them as well, would there? Well, right now, um, we are targeting the APIs for for businesses um, that are registered within Singapore. Uh, because for our developer and partner portal, uh, to get onboarded, you will need to log in with CodePass. Um, but there is no, um, but of course, you can actually go to uh, our mailing list and drop us an email uh, in, you know, indicating your interest, and we will uh, review that on a case by case basis. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. And that was, I think there were a couple of um, email addresses. Well, you can go to the NDI dash. API.gov.sg uh, website uh, and uh, and contact you guys from there. So the, the next question uh, is about hackathons. Um, are you are you organizing any hackathons to for people to work on your APIs? I guess um, we 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 had uh, uh, organized hackathons before uh, within the division. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's an interesting idea. Uh, for now, I think uh, we are really concentrating on trying to, um, um, you know, build up the initiative uh, to to fight uh, this COVID situation. Um, so if if I think time permits, um, I I wouldn't say no to that. I guess. So so you're prioritizing the the inquiries you've already had from mm-hmm. the, the building management services of, of major buildings and, and facilities mm-hmm. um, because they they are the ones who have been uh, who have realized that they have the biggest problem right now in this two-step yep. um, two-step registration process okay all right yep. that's, that's great comment. okay all right um, well th- thank you thank you very much Eric for explaining that and uh, we'll uh, we look forward to um, the discussion also with uh, with Kendrick uh, uh, later on. Sure. And thanks very much for Thank sharing. Thank you very much. Thanks, John.